I want to give a voice to these stories enough that people will be incensed by it to put some pressure on this organization to stop abusing people. What I uncovered was much deeper. Leah Rimini is on a mission. And so I'm hoping that by doing the show, we affect some kind of change. I'm gonna tell these stories in hopes that people wake up and go, okay, somebody needs to do something about this cult. Now the Hollywood star taking on the Church of Scientology in an explosive new documentary. Former member Leah Remini goes on the attack detailing the lies, celebrity recruiters and shocking allegations of abuse. The controversial Church of Scientology with its major presence in Clearwater is launching its own TV network tonight. Scientology's spiritual headquarters is in Clearwater and is expanding. This right here is a commercial for its new television network. According to this website, the Scientology Network will be available on multiple platforms, including DirecTV and Roku. A promotional video says the only thing more interesting than what you've heard is what you haven't. It appears there will be a series called Inside Scientology, another focusing on the religion's founder, L. Ron Hubbard, and a series called Destination Scientology showing church locations around the world. We don't know yet how much the center in Clearwater will be featured, Scientology owns more than $260 million in property in downtown Clearwater and is planning even more growth. tweeted that it's time for us to tell our story. Well, Scientology is at the, at the center of a high profile investigative projects like Leah Remini's A&E docuseries, Scientology and the Aftermath. We reached out to the Church of Scientology today for more details, but they answered only that more information will be available once we begin airing. Thanks for asking. The controversial group led by David Miscavige has been accused of abuse and exploitation. The church may use the network to combat all the negative publicity it's gotten from the documentary Going Clear and books and TV appearances by former member Leah Remini. In a new eight-part documentary series called Scientology in the Aftermath, which has just premiered in the US on A&E, Remini exposes what she says really goes on inside the controversial church the lies, the abuse, and the despicable way the organization tears families apart. Leah Rimini is an American actress, writer, comedian. You said yes, in like Flynn, in like Flynn. Okay, all right, all right. Most Australians would know from her role really opposite Kevin James on the TV series King of Queens. Remini was just nine years old when her stepdad introduced her mother to Scientology. She would grow up in the church and become one of its biggest supporters. Things are not going to change on this planet. Um, we are the most ethical group you're ever going to find and actually the only group that's really making change for mankind. She stayed with the church her whole adult life and it all went really well until the 2006 wedding of Tom Cruise to Katie Holmes. I was invited to Tom Cruise's wedding. All of the top clergy of Scientology are there. It was a big deal for the church. And then I'm innocently uh, standing by this fireplace in this big castle in Italy. And I said, hey, where's Shelley? Shelley Miscavige is the leader's wife. This was being called the wedding of the century. So it was very weird that she wasn't there. And their reaction was like, I mean, that's the leader's wife. You really shouldn't be asking about her. Like all members who questioned Scientology, Remini would be interrogated and punished. 
She eventually left the church and wrote her book. When I wrote my book, I was really kind of hoping to end this chapter of my life with Scientology. But what started to happen was people who used to work for the church, high-ranking executives and parishioners, were reaching out to me. And one of those people was Amy Scobie. The first episode of the new documentary tells the story of Amy Scobie and her mother. Amy was recruited into Scientology at the age of 14. She would spend the next 27 years in the church. My mission was to recruit celebrities into Scientology and make them into walking success stories of Scientology. The Church of Scientology is a business, and like any business, they love to have a celebrity selling it. The Celebrity Center inspires me to try to help where I can. It's for any denomination, um, and it works, and that's the bottom line. When I found Celebrity Center, I found uh, my life again. Um, that's when I found Scientology, and I. I found uh, the truth. I was responsible for establishing the celebrity centers and building them and um, staffing them up and training them and stuff like that and putting the hotel there. We went to extremes to make celebrities happy and it was mainly Tom Cruise. My job, I was being run by Shelley Miscavige out of David Miscavige's office to surround Tom Cruise with Scientologists on staff. So I had to hire an executive housekeeper, a maid, a and they had cook. to be Scientologists. They all had to be Scientologists. Why? Because they wanted him to only be in Scientology, 100%. During that time, that's when I saw the abuses going on with David Miscavige. We were in meetings with him very often. And he's a very angry man. If you said something, that didn't please him, he would go off on you. If you're a man, he would likely hit you, punch you, knock you down on the, you know, choke you. I witnessed that at least on a dozen occasions. Many people have given accounts of Miscavige's physical and emotional abuse. Former top-ranking Scientologist Mike Rinder is one of them. You don't get thrown into the fire in Scientology. You get boiled like a frog. But perhaps the most disturbing revelation was this. Is, I was 14 when I started in Scientology, and um, I had a boss who was 35 years old. He was married. He had me stay back, you know, when everybody else left, and basically we had sex. This was statutory rape, and I was too afraid to tell anyone about it. He told his wife, and then they told the organization, and then the organization did not tell my mother, did not tell my father, who would put him, put him in jail, um, did not tell the police. Now we're starting to hear stories of abuse. And like every other time we hear this story about it happening in a church, it is covered up. Entertainment reporter Andrew Mercado says the church is doing all it can to discredit Remini. Scientology released a statement describing Leah Remini as a spoilt, entitled diva who obsessively complains about petty matters. You know, petty matters like sexual abuse, physical abuse, family separation. You're not going to continue to lie to people and abuse people and take their money and their lives. If I can stop one, then I'm going to do it. The Church of Scientology has issued a statement describing that documentary series as a work of fiction. It accuses Remini of attacking the organisation for profit and claims the allegations by former members are lies. A Clearwater bar owner claims the Church of Scientology is spying on him. It all started when a friend gave him a VIP tour of a downtown penthouse being built for actor Tom Cruise. And a strange story, Mel fill us in. Hey, Jen, good evening to you. The bar owner posted a Facebook Live video of this penthouse, and ever since, he says, things have been weird. I would have never dreamed in a million years that would happen to me. Clay Irwin tells us life lately has certainly been strange. It's been interesting, no doubt about it. The owner of the Lucky Anchor Irish Bar in downtown Clearwater was thrilled when a contractor buddy asked him if he wanted to check out the penthouse nearby being built by Tom Cruise. This is Clay reporting live from Tom Cruise Condo. Clay captured the moment on Facebook Live. We're on the top floor, by the way. 
After posting the video, it went viral and it was fast. So was the response, he says, from the Church of Scientology. He tells us they showed up quickly and asked him to remove the video from Facebook. I guess Mr. Cruz saw it or something along those lines and he guess he wasn't happy about it. And they asked me to take it down and I did it right there on the spot. Clay thought the drama was over, but now he thinks he's being watched. He claims his dog sniffed out a spy camera planted across the street from his home. That's when he got worried and decided to put his house on the market. The Church of Scientology has dealt with many high-profile defectors, including celebrities and former top executives. But this situation, this is truly unique. The father of the undisputed leader of the church quitting writing a book and hauling into public view an all-out war within Scientology's ruling family. It's the summer of 2004, and there's a special event taking place on board the luxury Scientology cruise ship known as the Free Winds. It's a 42nd birthday celebration for the church's most prominent parishioner, Tom Cruise. I like an old rock and roll. Rocking out right alongside the star, the undisputed leader of Scientology, the chairman of the board, David Miscavige. You never me out of but look in the background, that older gentleman playing the horn, that's Ron Miscavige, David's dad, who now, much to the chagrin of the church, has decided to step out and play solo. What's the relationship between your son and Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise thinks that David is the top Thetan, or top spiritual being on this planet. The top spiritual being on this planet. They're like the best of buddies. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, Ron Miscavige, now 80, is speaking out about why he decided to leave the church and write a book about his own son called Ruthless. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That taste of power, I think, is what changed David. Ron spent nearly three decades working in the Sea Org, the religious order of the church, where he says he witnessed his son's volcanic temper. And David is backstage literally tearing me apart verbally for 55 minutes, cursing, yelling, screaming at me. And it got worse and worse and worse. My name is Peter Schles. I'm a songwriter. What's more, the church conducted its own interviews with people who used to work with Ron and gave them to us. Ron was an embarrassment to me, personally. Ron says these charges are trumped up. He says if he was really as bad as his former colleagues now insist, why was he right there at this celebration for Scientology's star? And tonight on 2020, you're going to hear much more of Ron's story. I have never met a more competent, a more intelligent, a more tolerant, a more compassionate being. That is how Tom Cruise describes David Miscavige, the unquestioned leader of Scientology, one of the most controversial new religions on the planet. It's a story that affects every Scientologist. But what you're about to see is truly unique. The father of the undisputed leader of the church quitting, writing a book, and hauling into public view an all-out war. Within the church, he is exalted. Well, thank you very much. It's truly really my pleasure to join you. He holds forth in front of adoring crowds and rubs shoulders with celebrity parishioners such as Cruz, John Travolta, and Kirstie Alley. But among some former members, he is wildly controversial. He uses that power to hurt people. If, if I may just interrupt for a moment, you realize there's a little bit of a problem in getting people to talk critically about the Church of Scientology, because quite frankly, they're scared. Oh, no, no, no. But tonight, new claims about the secretive world of Scientology and the man at its center. Let's face it, Scientologists have not been treated like members of other religions ever. From an unusual source. So you spent 12 years right here on the street. 12 years right here, yeah. Good memories here? Pretty good memories. Ron Miscavige, David Miscavige's father, has left the church and is speaking out for the first time exclusively to ABC News. You have written a whole book about your son, and you've called the book Ruthless. Yeah. It's a pretty damning charge to level against your own child. He wasn't always that way. I'm going to get there first. <laughs> Leah Remini, former star of The King of Queens, who also left the church and wrote a book called Troublemaker. Hey. 
Oh, you look like a million Thank bucks. You. This is great seeing you, I'll tell you. Hi. Good. You're getting better looking, you know that. So the two of you guys haven't seen each other since you were both active Scientologists. That's right, right yeah? yeah. He has a right to tell his story. I have a right to tell my story, and so do thousands of others. Do you know of any other church that criticizes former members in the way in which Scientology does? Well, I, I, I think it all depends on the circumstances. Certainly, uh, you see that happen with respect to the Vatican and so on. When the Vatican gets attacked, I mean, they have something to say about the, uh, the attackers. If somebody leaves the Catholic Church, do you really think they're going to be on the receiving end of this level of vitriol? Not if they leave the church and they go off and live their life. No, I mean, but if, if they, they leave and criticize it, because people leave and criticize the Catholic Church all the time. Yes, exactly. And I, I do think that if, if people in the church are asked for their opinion of this particular person, that you may well get the same, uh, the same kind of criticism. But it's not as if the people were just randomly asked. This is the church itself asking its parishioners, videotaping it and giving it to ABC News. Well, again, the facts are what they are. Ron says the facts are that by 2012, he can no longer bear life in the Sea Org. So along with his wife, Becky, who he married after divorcing David's mother, he makes a radical move. He quits. This unusual family history and subsequent family feud is set in motion in 1968 when Ron, a father of four, a salesman, and aspiring musician, starts dabbling in Scientology after learning about the new religion founded by science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard at a business meeting. There are certain evils in society which definitely should cease, and we are taking some responsibility for them. 